Well, good morning. Welcome to the Thought for the Day from the Lady Grove Church. I thought I would start with a, a passage from Isaiah, chapter 40, um, verse 3 through to 8. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I'm going to stop there. That's actually only verses 3 to 5. I'll do 6 to, to 8 shortly. Um, the, the, the passage came to me um, because I've, I'm reading, I might have mentioned to you, um, I'm reading um, a book by Virginia Woolf. Never read anything um, by her before. Just uh, a month ago or so I, I noticed there was a special offer that you could buy all her works on Kindle for 99p and I thought right, well, that's a good chance during lockdown. It's um, I've only got to about 3% of her stuff so far and that's taken me over a month so um, that'll keep me for the rest of lockdown I thought to myself. Um, and yeah it's, it's an interesting read. It's not my usual fare. There's not, there's not a spaceship or a, or a lightsaber anywhere to be seen. But last night, as I lay in bed reading the next chapter, I came across this particular sentence. So I'll put it into uh, into context. The the well, what, the lady who I saw as the heroine of the piece. I'm not entirely sure she's the heroine, um, but she certainly gets quite a bit of um, of, of the uh, the story. Uh, she's fallen ill with some sort of. Um, I wonder if it's malaria, something like that. Just before she fell ill, she got engaged for the very first time. Her and this young man fell deeply in love and finally acknowledged that love to each other and are really, really happy. And then, as I say, she falls ill. And she's in bed, being looked after by a nurse and a doctor. And her fiancé is obviously very concerned. And then I came across this sentence. He saw the room and the garden and the trees moving in the air. They could go on without her. She could die. Really, really a strange sentence really. That he concludes, he looks out at the garden, he sees nature and realises nature can go on without her. There's nothing to stop her from dying. I know what happens to her now, I, uh, I've got to the end of the chapter, I won't do a, a spoiler. And it really got me thinking, because coronavirus I guess has, and I may have mentioned this before, has really brought us very close to our understanding or lack of understanding about our mortality. Uh, many, many people in this country and across the world have died, perhaps we would say, before their time. And while it's hit mainly older people, it has also killed young people. It has defeated this idea of three score years and ten and just shown us how frail we are and as we have regularly said each person who dies leaves family and friends and leaves a lot of upset and pain but while that is going on the politicians have these statistics that just tell us how many numbers have died. And as that little verse or little sentence from um, Virginia Woolf seemed to suggest, okay, you have a family mourning, you have MPs counting numbers, 
and then you have the world going on. And we can die because it might make a blind bit of difference to the trees and the flowers. The passage I have just read from Isaiah is probably well known to us. It's the passage that um, is used to point to John the Baptist. He is this one, this voice calling in the wilderness about preparing the way for the Lord. And what did John the Baptist do? He then, in the wilderness, he spoke about the kingdom of God and challenged people to repent and to demonstrate that repentance by being baptised. But if we go back to Isaiah, that's a very different story. I'll continue with verse 6 onwards. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because of the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Not a case of repentance, but just a recognition that we are like grass, we are like flowers. It's a passage that is regularly used in certainly the Church of England's funeral service. A passage that recognises our mortality, recognises that we're here just for an occasion. And it's not in this passage, I'm not quite sure where the, where the Church of England gets it from, but, but I'm sure there's a sentence, I haven't done a funeral for a little while, that, that, that is used in this where it then says, and the place will remember it no more. We are very temporary. We are like that sentence in Virginia Woolf's book. The world will go on spinning. Trees will continue to grow. Flowers will continue to flourish and then wither. Whatever we do. The one thing in life that truly endures is the Word of God. It got me thinking about all these statues. In some ways, okay, you know, I hear Donald Trump saying, oh, but they're sort of signs of honour and they're signs of, of army camps that continue to, to go on. I guess they're human's pathetic attempt at trying to gain mortality. Naming a block of a, a hotel block or, a, or anything really after us is just trim, trying to say, look, I'm, I'm godlike. I'm going to live forever. And of course the truth is no. Each one of us, when our time is up, will breathe our last. It's a, an interesting sort of balance there. John the Baptist is called out to be this voice in the wilderness. To proclaim the kingdom of God. To call people to repentance. But also to recognise that we are here temporarily. I guess it says to me, where do we put our priorities? So much of what we build, so much of what we do is going to be like the flowers of the field and like the grass. It will wither and die or it will get passed to somebody else and it won't really matter. What really matters is perhaps the memories we leave, the behaviour that we carry out while we're here, whether we help build people up so that they then continue to go.
continue with the work of God and whether we actually knock people down. We are temporary. We wither like the flowers in the field. But we can leave. We can leave memories and we can leave values that can be carried on, that can run through generation after generation. As we share the word of God and what we say and what we do and how we behave. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for every day that we breathe. Every day that we can look at your creation. We can enjoy its beauty. We can see that grass and those flowers of the field. We can smell their perfume. We can enjoy the beauty of their petals of their leaves, of their stalks. And thank you for that image. And as we recognise that flowers will wither away, the reality is that each one of us is doing likewise. Father, we, <coughs> we pray that we would use our time wisely. We would use our time compassionately. We would use our time thoughtfully. Lord, may we leave footprints in other people's lives that are creative and positive and helpful. So that while we do not live, good memories of us will live. And Lord, as we, as we continue to work through our past histories, not just of this country, but right across the world, and recognising that so many people were people of their own generation, were people with flawed ideas because they had listened to people that came before them. We pray for understanding as we listen to one another's stories and as we question whether statues need to be out in the open or in museums. Lord, we thank you for the good that has been carried out by many, many people. recognise that no one is perfect and that we have all fallen short of your glory. So Lord, help us to learn from the positive but to reject the negative and hurtful. And we pray that we would have understanding as we listen to what different statues and other forms of commemoration mean to different parts of our community. And Lord, we continue to pray for the city of Leicester. Lord, our hearts go out to all the businesses who have bought in um, products and, and food and drink and the many different things thinking that they were going to be opening up this weekend. Things that they could have avoided buying if they had only been warned of this potential lockdown earlier. Would we pray that that they will be recompensed for their losses. 
we pray for our government and for the decisions it makes. We pray that the right way forward will be will be led. That we will avoid any more deaths, any more redundancies, any more collapses of companies than we really need to face. And Lord, we heard so much of a, well, of a vision from our Prime Minister yesterday. Lord, may they not be empty words. May they not be just waffle that <coughs> tries to put our attention somewhere else. Lord, we recognise that it's all, well, we do need to look to the future. But for many of us, we continue to work day by day, taking the necessary steps to avoid, avoid spreading this illness and avoid catching it ourselves. Lord, we're reminded that every time we go into a shop, every time we, we walk past someone, we must, we must avoid them, we must avoid touching, we must avoid getting too close. And it's so difficult when that is and needs to be firmly at the centre of our thoughts. We're now being encouraged to, to think about five years, ten years time. And Lord, we pray for this country as it now goes towards its complete departure from the EU. We're now past the 30th of June. We can't have an extension. Lord, we pray for the discussions that continue to go on. And for all the planning that needs to be still done about how we will do imports and exports, how we will offer services, how we will do so many things. Previously we had legislation in place for and I read in the news that more people would prefer to stay as part of the EU now that it's too late. pray that we won't regret the decision that we have made. And that any suffering that people will face will be made up for somehow. And Lord, I pray for all those people in other countries to our British citizens who are realising that um, their, their security and their homes and all about their life are, are possibly at risk. That they will get the support that they need from our government to help them to, to do whatever they need to do. Father, we pray and continue to pray for our health service and our care, to, um, our care industry and, and our teachers and our providers of the basic utilities and our local government for our emergency services those who have continued to work hard throughout this lockdown to ensure that this country goes on. Lord, we bless them. Bless them with times to 
to recuperate and relax and recover. And Lord, we pray for our families. We thank you for them. We thank you for the memories that they have left in our hearts and minds. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us not to be fearful of our, mat or mo our mortality. Rather to accept it, embrace it even. And to recognise that today is a gift from you. It can be used for good or wasted. Lord, may we learn to live and speak of your kingdom. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So well, have a good day. Stay safe. Seek God's blessing and bless others. And I'll see you again tomorrow. See ya. <laughs>